As I inch further into my experience of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, a prudent question has cropped up in my mind as I play through the game, which has come not simply from my own changing approaches to how I play JRPG games and, and particularly this Final Fantasy game, but also how others I know and have been speaking with have chosen to approach and play this game too. And what I mean by this is that when it comes to JRPGs, and sprawling sagas like Final Fantasy, and specifically with Rebirth, which has so much in it with regards to the main story, but also the side quests and additional content around that, is how players have chosen to order their adventure, prioritise story against side quests and additional stuff, and navigate the broad array of things to do in this game. And I suppose I was prompted by this, because in recent years, for reasons that I will come to, I find myself smashing through stories quite quickly at the expense of everything else on my initial playthrough and then I go back either on a second run or at that penultimate pre-final dungeon phase where you pretty much are opened up in the world and you can go and finish things off and this is interesting because several other people that I speak to kind of continuing on with it at a leisurely pace they are maybe halfway through the main story because they are picking up side quests and playing through mini games as they come to them so for me personally, uh, I've always been quite story focused anyway, and even dating back to my first experiences with JRPGs, with Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, I would mostly prioritise story over everything else anyway, because it was always so compelling to me. So a case in point that I've discussed numerous times before is when we first encounter the Laguna Dreams on the train in Final Fantasy VIII, and that really pushed me on to pursue the main story and try and find out why that was happening. So my first playthrough of Final Fantasy VIII was very much to do with story, rather than getting ultimate weapons and doing all the additional stuff like the card club side quests and whatever. And so it was generally once those games started to fully open up, and once you reach that point of no return moment where you're about to go into the final dungeon, that is generally the point where I will take my foot off the gas and I think it's very intuitively indicated to players that this is your chance to go around and finish up stuff, do side quests and, and all of that sort of thing. So for a few reasons, uh, my approach has changed in recent years to how I approach this, uh, some of which is positive and a positive response to how games are now designed and built. And, and one is slightly more negative, uh, which is more of a response to external factors around how games are discussed today and the insane pace of consumption. So first up, with the positive aspect, I really like how games, including Final Fantasy, they not only retain that clear penultimate game moment where you can run around and finish things off before the last dungeon, but also we, we've had the introduction of post-game replays or new game plus features, which allow us to sort of retain our level, retain our progress in many ways in terms of equipment and that sort of thing, but then go through the game a second time, focusing on whatever we didn't focus on the first time round. So for my part, I'm able to go back through FF7 Rebirth now at a much more leisurely pace and indulge the side quests that I didn't quite finish, indulge the mini games that I didn't bother trying, and generally make the most of my time there. Uh, so that's proved great. But I suppose the negative side, uh, and the thing that has prompted me to sort of play quite quickly at, in it initially and then go back at a more casual pace, is... And I've, I've done this since Final Fantasy VII Remake's release, which is, was the first time I was really concerned about it, and subsequently with FF16 and now Rebirth. But I feel compelled to smash through main stories quite promptly because of the risk of spoilers, because of external discussions that take place pretty much anywhere you might sort of inhabit online, whether that's social media, forums, uh, game sites, and so on. You know, these things that are sort of integrated into our daily digital lives, forums, uh, game sites, and so on. You know, these things that are sort of integrated into our daily digital lives. And I know it's quite easy to say, well, don't go on Twitter or X or don't go on YouTube. But it, but it is quite hard to avoid that sort of thing these days if you're in, in those circles and you have notifications on your phones and all of that sort of thing. And specifically now we have some media outlets and content creators sort of posting stuff before the games are even released, which is kind of insane to me. So I did get a, a minor spoiler when Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, sorry, Remake was released, which quite frustrated me and prompted my sort of prompter play style. 
uh, I managed to avoid spoilers for Final Fantasy 16 and, and Rebirth. But I suppose my point here is that I'm spurned on to play the main story first for fear of spoilers. Uh, and although I do traditionally favour story anyway, so I do generally prioritise that, it's much more of a compulsive thing for me to do these days. And then I go through at a leisurely pace after that. And I suppose this is like stark contrast to sort of the older days uh, of playing Final Fantasy. And I, uh, I'm i speaking to my friend at the moment who is still playing through the main story of Rebirth, but he doesn't use social media or anything, so he's not concerned by it. But uh, we were talk- I've been lifelong fans of Final Fantasy with this guy, and we were talking about how when we were at school, you could pretty much play through and discuss a given Final Fantasy game over the course of like a school year. So, for example, Final Fantasy IX was released, or when Final Fantasy X was released, that would sort of tick us over in terms of playing and discussing stuff for like a year. Whereas now, you know, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been released for little over a month and people are already talking about other aspects of the industry and sort of discussing Rebirth as if everyone knows the story and and so on. So that's kind of insane to me, but it's very much part of this new era and this kind of constant media cycle churn that's going on in our daily lives. So back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and the means of play. This has prompted the the question in my head because I've, I've spoken to a few people that are still playing through it. They seem completely unfazed by external factors and, and those sort of things. And I think it's really interesting because without providing spoilers, there is a lot of narratively pertinent stuff in, in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth specifically, in terms of its side quests, in terms of its mini games, that are actually quite, I suppose, narratively pertinent and chronologically chronological in the order of play so depending on which chapter you're on how far you are into the story so there's a lot of context and chronology in some of these side quests and so in terms of order of play in some cases it actually makes less sense to wait till the end of the game in that pre-final dungeon phase and then go back and finish stuff off because actually when I tried doing that there was a lot of characters and circumstances that I hadn't encountered for several hours, you know, like back in chapter three or back in chapter four, whenever it might have been earlier in the game. And so it, it kind of unsynchronized from, from what you were doing. And, and th- there's a lot more kind of narrative and story and stories within stories bound up to the additional content in, in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And I think a lot of this stuff is much, it seems much better to play in sequence uh, because so much stuff is is richly interconnected with characters and allegiances and stories and that sort of thing. And so unlike older games and older Final Fantasies where a lot of the side quests were purely mechanical, uh, so for example, breeding chocobos in Final Fantasy VII or getting the sigils for weapons in Final Fantasy X, that stuff can pretty much be done whenever you want. It, it, it has no narrative pertinence to it at all. Whereas Rebirth side quests and minigames, really, I, th- I think they work more often than not when they come in sequence. Um, so that was really interesting. And again, as I say, kind of, it's really interesting to sort of engage with others and see how they choose to play. So this is the thought of the day, I suppose. When do we prefer, or when do you prefer, to indulge in side quests and that additional content? Do you play as you go? Uh, are you phased by spoilers and or the threat of spoilers? Or do you wait for the final dungeon or indeed play through more leisurely with a new game plus? 